Welcome to the NCLEX uh, content review class by Nursing World Nigeria. Uh, most people tend to focus uh, so much on content while preparing for the NCLEX. Uh, if you're not using the decision tree while solving your NCLEX questions, then uh, you're missing out. Okay, so I'm sure this is what everybody wants. You want to be a registered nurse with a board in the US. So this is one of our instructors, Mrs. Nene Wankwo. Uh, she's also readily available to guide you uh, through the steps to registering as a nurse in the US. Just a quick one on the decision tree. You want to go through the steps, with steps one to five. You'll see that when we start looking at the questions. So let's jump right into it. Uh, question one. The nurse provides care for the client immediately after arrival in the emergency department. Emergency personnel report that the client was involved in a head-on collision with immediate loss of consciousness. Uh, what is the first action taken by the nurse? Okay, uh, like we said in the previous class, you want to determine is this a priority question or is this an evaluation question? but it's obviously a priority question. So we're gonna use all five steps of this decision tree. Again, you must have determined what your topic is, but uh, obviously uh, you can determine that this is our topic right here, loss of consciousness. So that's our topic right there. Uh, so we'll go to step two of the decision tree, assessment versus implementation. If you quickly look at all of this, you will see they are all assessment answer option choices. So. As a quick one, we cannot eliminate at this point. So we need to go to step three. And if you go through all of this, you will see these are also, all of them are physical answer choices. Uh, so we still cannot eliminate at this point. So it's best to go to step four. And again, if you look at step four, look at our answer choices again, Glasgow cover scale. Uh, this is not an ABC, this is more or less neuro. So I'm going to categorize it as that. Answer B, bilateral blood pressure, you want to say, so this is circulatory, uh, bilateral popularity response to light. This is also a neural assessment, and this is breathing. So you can see with this, we can take off this, we can take off our neural option choices, and then we're left with B and C. And obviously, this is our right answer choices. So uh, that's how easy the decision tree makes these questions look like. So you want to master these questions, you want to enroll in these classes and get a feel of how to use the decision tree. Let's try another question. At a rehab center for clients with spinal cord injury, the nurse conducts an orientation session for a group of UAPs. Which statement is most important for the nurse to include? Uh, so most important, again, most important that tells me priority. So we're going to use all five steps of the decision tree. But again, you should have determined what your topic is. So my topic here would be, okay, so priority UAP education. Okay, one of the most important for the host to include. So that's priority UAP education regarding spinal cord injury. So let's go to step two. If we look at all of these questions, we don't want to waste so much time. You can just quickly run. You see that they're all implementation uh, answer options. So we can eliminate any option here. So go to step three, mass loss. Number one, uh, the clients might be angry at time. Anger, anger. Anger is more of psychosocial. So we can categorize this as psychosocial. Um, psychosocial, okay. Uh, option B, obtain the client's permission before touching the client. Well, that's legal. This is legal, so we can, uh, this, is, this is physical, okay because it's legal. Again, C, most clients are right, believing they will walk out of fear. This is also psychosocial, that's belief. So this is a psychosocial answer option choice. And D, personnel in this environment often need counseling. Counseling is also psychosocial. So we're gonna categorize this as psychosocial, okay? So obviously we have three uh, psychosocial answer choices and one physical. And again, you need to remember physical answer choices always take priority over psychosocial answer choice. But before you do that, you want to ask yourself, 
at step four, does this make sense? And if it does, then your physical answer choice is the right answer. So you want to obtain permission, you see? You may not even know the content, but just knowing how to use your decision tree can also save you uh, in some of these questions. Let's look at question number three. A client is diagnosed with malnutrition. A client diagnosed with malnutrition is prescribed continuous enteral feedings through a newly placed gastrotomy tube. Which actions would the nurse include in the client's plan of care? Select order apply. So these are most these are dreaded startup questions, but it's not, it's not, you shouldn't even dread them because if you use your decision tree, you have it covered. So option, we can look at all the options and uh, uh, we know it's an evaluation questions. We are looking for correct care. Uh, and remember, startup questions are always evaluation questions. So we're going to use step one and step five. So what's our topic? Uh, we're looking at correct care for a client with a gastrostomy tube. So that's our topic. So you want to ask yourself, we're going to evaluate each of the answer choices. Question, answer uh, option one, is this correct care? You want to cover the insertion site on a headship bandage well it is not remember uh if you want to break it further we remember that adhesive bandage increases uh, risks of infections as it damages the skin it also increases risks of dislodgement so you see with your decision tree we're able to eliminate that number two is that correct care add eight hours of feeding to the bag at a time well it is not only four hours should be added to reduce risks of uh, a bacterial contamination so this is not correct care. We can cancel that out. Three, rotate the gastrotomy tube 360 degrees once daily. Yes, this is correct care. Remember, it's going to help prevent skin breakdown. We don't want the tube to get stuck against the skin. So this is correct care. So we're going to leave this in. How about number four? Auscultate for whoosh of air through the gastrotomy tube. Is this a correct way of verifying placement, tube placement? Well, it is unsafe and it's inaccurate, so we can eliminate this. Uh, you can check pH to verify placement for tubes such as this. And the last but not the least, check for slight in and out movement of the gastrotomy tube. Is this a correct? Is this correct care? Yes, it, it helps to tell you the tube is not embedded in the stomach wall, so we can keep this in. So obviously, our correct answers are this, option three and option five. Okay, so let's look at another question. Um, the LPN, LVN reporting to the nurse says, you may want to see the client recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I'm not sure how well things are going. The nurse enters the room and finds the client sitting quietly, looking out the window. As the nurse approaches the client, the client does not look at the nurse. What is the most appropriate question for the nurse to ask? Okay, what's the most appropriate question for the nurse to ask. So what's our topic here? You are concerned about the client's behavior. So that's our topic, maybe client behavior concerns. What type of question is this? Is it a priority question? Is it a priority question? Is this an evaluation question? Or well, this is more or less a therapeutic uh, communications type of question. So this is a therapeutic communication question. So think about the rules in therapeutic communications. You want questions to be open. You want to uh, open-ended questions. You don't want to ask why. You don't want to say, don't worry. You want to provide factual information. So you want to think about these rules as we look at our answer option choices. So option A, sleep problems are common during times of stress. Have you had difficulty sleeping? Uh, this is a yes, no type of question. Uh, and it doesn't even relate to our topic. So we want to eliminate that immediately. So we can take this off. How about number B? Tell me what you know about your diagnosis and the treatment you will receive. Well, this is open-ended and about the client's diagnosis about pancreatic cancer. So let's keep this for now. Let's leave this for consideration. Uh, how about option C? How would you describe your overall health status up to this time of your life? Uh, it's open-ended, but not about our topic. You see, you need to know your topic that keeps you focused. So this is it's actually open-ended, but it's not related to our topic, which is our client's behavior that's causing us to be concerned. So we can scratch this out. And number four, um, have you, how have you handled any health problems you experienced in the past? It's also open-ended, 
but doesn't focus on a right here, right now problem. So this is going to be scratched out. So number two remains our best answer option choice. So uh, these are some of the points you need to note. For example, in talking about which is an assessment question, which is an implementation question, and all of that, which is your priority questions, and all of that. So uh, let's. let's